So Eric is going to be talking about condo screening versus random singlet formation in highly disordered systems. So thanks, Alexandre. So uh, can you hear me well? OK, so I'd like first to thank the organizers for giving the opportunity to present this, uh, my work here in this nice conference. So this is the second edition. So I was in the first, so it's really a pleasure to, to be back. So I, today I'm going to talk about some condo screening and highly disordered systems. So I, I'd like to thank Vivian. So she did a nice introduction already for disordered and interacting systems. So I'll build up on her talk. And also earlier today, we had a talk by João Nuno and talking about models. And I'll, I'll, I'll also present some models here. So this is more, uh, I'll present models and try to give a more qualitative physics than the, the physics we were discussing previously where we're really doing a bin issue and so on. So uh, first, I would like to thank the, my collaborators. So this is mainly the work from Igor. So he's my PhD student. He's almost finished. So he's, this is the work from, from his PhD. And I enjoy lots of collaboration with Eduardo, my former PhD student, Vlad. So those are the two ones who basically introduced to, to the subject. But I mean, I didn't discuss with them these results in full yet. So I mean, the blame is solely on me, but I have to acknowledge them because I mean, they were the one who got me interested in this kind of nice problem. And also I have to acknowledge uh, the agencies, CNPQ and, and FAPESP for giving the money for, for carrying on this research. So specifically, I'm going to talk about dope semiconductors. So we heard a lot about dope semiconductors. So just to, to, to have an example in mind, so I, I'm really interested in silicon doped phosphorus. So which, I mean, what's this is kind of old problem? So what are really interested? So the, the key results are the following. So we are, I'm really interested in this metal insulator transition. So if you, if you are, if you have no dopant, so no, no phosphorus, so basically this is more or less the situation. So this is the silicon matrix, and I put phosphorus. Each phosphorus adds an extra electron to the problem. So if the, if the concentration of phosphorus is low enough, so the, the phosphor atoms are far away, and you still have an insulator, so you have discrete impurity levels. So essentially, this is the band gap. And then inside the band gap, you have discrete impurity levels, so each Phosphorus contributes when it by the, the, the electron are binding, so have these discrete impurity levels. Whereas if you increase the density, so you go above the critical, critical concentration of density, then you create an impurity band inside the gap. And then, so basically pictorially, you just start to overlap those guys. And then you really have an impurity band. And then your system becomes a metal. So this is the metal insulated transition I'm talking about as a function of the dopants, as a function of N, where N is the dopant. So the observable, which can describe this metal related transition is the conductivity extrapolated to t equals zero. So I'm really talking about really low temperatures. In principle, you can calculate the conductivity of the system is always finite at finite temperature because always have activated conductivity, but I'm really talking about the t equals zero limit. So you can have to extrapolate to t equals zero. And I'm really, let's look at this uncompensated, it's just, it's just doped with this phosphorus. So you really see when you go to the critical value of n, the conductivity goes to zero continuously, so you really have a metal insulated transition. So this side you have a metal, and this side you have an insulator. So this is the transition I'm talking about. And just to give you a number, so this n critical in the real materials like 10 to 18 centimeters cubed. So this is the number, but I'm not going to focus more much about the number. So I'll calculate everything as a function of nc. So this is the transition I'm talking about. I mean, this is an old problem. So why? I mean, why are we interested in this problem? And why is this so interesting? So one of the things which make this problem particularly interesting is the thermodynamic. I mean, you have disorder, and I'm, I argue you have interaction. So this is why it's interesting. But there, if you look to the experimental uh, some observables, they have a quite peculiar behavior. So the first thing we, we can look this is the, just the magnetic susceptibility divided by some 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 value in the bulk, the clean value. So this is really the value deep inside the, met, the metallic phase. Okay, so. Then you see, so this is the temperature. As you decrease the temperature, the susceptibility actually, instead of going down, it goes up. It seems to diverge, and it seems to diverge as a power law. So this, this is the form, it's like chi goes to t minus alpha, and alpha is the exponent. So this is the value of the exponent. So it seems to diverge. So this is quite peculiar because, I mean, you expected the susceptibility either to go there, to go to zero inside the the insulating phase, or it saturated the poly limit inside the metal. So it diverges really quite some peculiar thing. 
and this and and this, this behavior is kind of oblivious to the transition because as you cross the metal insulated transition, you still the value of the exponent changes, but the, the divergence does not. So you still have the same kind of behavior with a different exponent. So this is kind of a, a mysterious thing. So we'd like to understand this kind of physics. So and and one and and of course because you, sorry uh, because you dope this. The position of these dopants, it's random, so we have disorder. So we may think this metal insulating transition is under some like, but the fact that you have a finite susceptibility also suggests you have a local moment in your system. So in local moments, they are driven by correlations. So this is really, if you have a like, it, at each of these phosphors, you cannot put a second electron. So if a second electron enters there, it actually has so huge energy you have to pay. So it, basically, it's you just can put one electron per impurity level. So this is what causes the local moment. So in the sense, this metal isolated transition also has a mod characteristic. So it also has, you also have local moments in your system. And these local moments are precisely the ones responsible for this kind of, of behavior. So, and then, then you have it. So now we have the two, two key aspects of the problem. You have disorder and also have correlations. And by correlations, I mean you have the presence of local moments. Okay, and then here, uh, so basically, because of this kind of mod physics, the local moment, and it essentially will generate an effective coupling between two impurities, so two local moments. This is the local moment, this is the interaction it generates. J is like Hubbard-like, and Hubbard-like model. It's just T squared over U. So you have an effective antiferromagnetic coupling between these local impurities. And this is interesting because, I mean, deep into the insulating regime where you have this local moment, and we really have an much slower than NC, that this behavior, this power law behavior, can be really well captured by the so-called random singlet formation. What's this random singlet formation? It's just that because the system is so disordered, what, what, the, what the spins do? Instead of forming like an antiferromagnetic state or a spin glass state, they just pair up in singlets. So they just choose the nearest guy and form a singlet. So, and then as you, as you, as you, you just go through the system, look for the closest spin you have from a singlet. So it's just random because this, this is random, the positions are random, but essentially the response, you can understand the response of the system is just like you have, you have free, your free spins, you have a key like response from the free spins. And what free spins? So if the temperature is larger than the G, the coupling between these, these guys, the spins are free because I mean, you break the singlet. But if T is smaller than this guy, they are locked in a singlet, do not contribute to the susceptibility. Just by playing this, essentially this game, Beth and Lee, they propose that this is the random singlet phase. And this explains part, this behavior in the insulator. But I mean, this is, of course, relies on the fact that you are deep into the insulator. What we want to do is to see how this picture carries on into the metallic phase. So that's essentially, that's how the interplay will come about, okay? So this is, this is the part of the story, and that's why it's kind of interesting. And another part of the history, what's interesting, whereas you can rationalize local moments inside an insulator, it's harder to, 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 to rationalize local moments inside a metallic phase. So I mean, then, then you have to think about how come you can, you can have stable moments, local moments inside a metallic phase, because then you expect the metal to, to screen this, this kind of local moment. So this, the, essentially, uh, there is this kind of two fluid model which was proposed back uh, back in the 80s, I mean, um, almost in the 90s, and that's, the, and that's more or less how it works. So now we are talking about to have a disordered system, right? So locally, the energies are different, have different local environments. So we can, we can think about this problem in two ways, so we'll just highlight this. Just, just think about the usual stoner criterion to develop magnetism in a usual metal. So this is the, the criterion, just multiply the, the value of the interaction by the, the density of states, and I mean, is equal to one, so just, just a number. So, but since this local density of states at the Fermi level varies from side to side, in principle, you can have different critical view. So this is what somehow this picture is shown. So this peak here would be the formation of local moment, because in this region, you would have, let's say, uh, a larger density of states, and then you require a smaller U to get into the, meta into the insulating phase. So it's disor in disordered systems, it's actually possible to have stable local moments inside, whereas you, the bulk is in the metallic phase, but locally you can form local moments. So this is actually what's proposed in, the, in this paper, and also we did some work with Eduardo 
during my PhD a long, long time ago, so we show this is possible. So, I mean, because of this order, it's, it's really possible to have local moments inside the metallic phase. So I'm just going to assume that in this, in this kind of system, you have this local moment inside the metallic phase, which is also goes hand to hand with the experiments because here we need local moments to get this response. So that's essentially the, the key ingredient to our model. So we've, that's why this, this two fluid mod says, I mean, inside the, met, the metallic phase, you have a usual Fermi liquid plus these local moments which tend to form this random singlet phase. So that's, that's the key of our modeling to understand this problem. And that's based on this. That's the, the model we propose. I mean, the, we can debate the model, but that's the model we we're going to propose. We have, we're going to put two condo impurities, uh, and they are going to interact via Heisenberg-like interaction. So that's how it works. So this is basically my silicon matrix. So I have the phosphor here. They all they have this hopping, the mediated by the silicon background, and on top of this disordered metal, I put two condo, two local moments, and they interact via this antiferromagnet J, J or B. I need two because I want to cap this random singlet formation. So I need at least two impurities. And I, what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to put, place this impurity at random position. Then I study how this problem works. So this is the minimum model which I have. So this is just the, describe the, mat, the, the, the background, so the non-interact electrons. So I have a condo coupling between these electrons and these local moments, and I have direct coupling between the local moments. So that's the model which I'm going to talk about. And this, the, the hoppings, they are given by this exponential form. So this, so they are mediated through the insulating. And J is basically, is just this guy squared, because I'm assuming you have this local moment interacting via an ferromagnetic coupling. So, and then what I have to do, so if I'm deep into the insulating, this guy will win, I have random singlet. But it, as I move to the, into the metallic phase in the bulk, I expect the condo effect to take place and screen this local moment. So I, I, I try to capture this behavior between the condo effect, which would be the, met, the metallic phase. I screen the local moment, and the local moment trying to form random singlet. So that's a kind of competition which uh, I'm going to try to do. So this model is also proposed by Eduardo variations of this model, and also earlier by these authors here. So the first part of the model, so let's just, ju just look into the non-interacting part, so just to, to show the physics it captures. So this is, I have my impurities here, they are this, they are a this, are, are, are J apart. So because the hopping depends on the distance, that's basically the distribution of hopping, so this is the hopping value, the distribution, so you really see it's really broad. So because the system is disordered, this is a really broad distribution of energy scale. So this is more just to, to have a feeling. And actually, we can study the metal insulator transition in the bulk as a function of the dopants, as you put dopants in this non-interactive model. So we do this in a particular way. So I'll just flash it. So what we do, we use a, an RG method due to Aoki, which is quite interesting. So uh, that's how it works very briefly. So I, I start to decimate sites. So I have four sites in my system, for instance, and I pick up two sites, I just decimate them, I take them from, from my mod, and then I calculate the effective coupling between the, the remaining sites. So I, they, they have now effective energies and effective coupling, which are given by this expression. And then when I, when I decimate up to the last two sites, I can calculate the conductance, the transmittance between these two sites as uh, it's proportional to t the square, which is the hopping squared. So I can use a Landauer-like approach and calculate the conductance for the system. I, I stress this is ex actually an exact approach. There's no approximation here, but you can also understand this in, we, inside an, uh, an SDRG approach. So, but the point is I can calculate the conductance and I can do a finite size scaling here. This is the conductance, a function of the dopants for different system size. And you see below the critical value, this conductance goes down, which means you have an insulator above it means you, it goes up, it means you have a metal, so they cross at the critical point. So this is the value, it's like 1.75% of impurity already have the, the transition to the, met, to the metal. So I'll have now a bulk of disordered metals, which have a metal, this is Anderson metal insulated transition, as I increase the function of the number of dopants. So this is the known result. The only thing we did here is this novel method to calculate it. The, the metal insulator transition. And also, the, the second part, I need now to couple this, the, this, the local moment to this bath, so now I'm going to have a, like condo effect. So just to give a brief overview of the condo effect, I realize 
some people here are not that familiar. So how does that work? So have these local moments, okay, which essentially spins. They are at high temperatures. They are essentially free, so they just give a, a susceptibility contribution to this one over T is he like. And, and as you decrease the temperature, you reach a temperature to call, which we call condo temperature, which is essentially below this temperature, this, this, this local moment, it forms a singlet with the, uh, the bath, with the metallic bath. So this, this, they form a singlet, essentially so, more or less shown here, it polarized, and they form a singlet. And below this temperature, your susceptibility changes to a Pauli-like response. Now it's instead of one, being one over T, one over TK. So now it's essentially, it's a constant. So then you have this screening, which I allude to. So you have moments here at high temperature, and you have a thermal liquid where the moment is screened at low temperature. So that's the key of the condo temperature, and that's the kind of physics I'm building in my system. I'm really trying to capture this, this, this dichotomy between local moment and thermal liquid or metallic phase. And this condo scale, it has typically this dependence on this coupling. It's exponentially on the, the coupling and the density of states at the Fermi level. Uh, and also, if you, now if you put two impurities, you, you still have the condo effect on each one of them. You have the direct coupling between the impurities, which is GIJ, which I, I put in my model. But you could, could also have an indirect coupling between the impurities via the so-called RKQI interaction, because I mean, this impurity here polarized the, met, the metal here, and this polarization goes through that the other, to the other impurity, which sees the polarization. So you have an indirect coupling of the system, uh, but this coupling, actually I won't consider it, I'll show why, but if you, if you look to some kind of Doniak phase diagram, it, it shows more or less, this is temperature, this is basically JK, so if JK is, is small enough, essentially the condo, the condo effect won't take place, <coughs> basically this magnet is moving, so you have a magnetic phase, but if you increase JK, you go into the condo regime, so that's the condo uh, random signal of the condo magnetic uh, dichotomy, which I alluded to. So that's kind of the physics which I'm going to, to discuss. And this temperature here, the nail temperature, the order temperature, or the magnetism is actually given by this J, and the condo temperature, the scale of the condo temperature is shown here. So, so, so you can have an idea. So how do I solve this problem? This is, this is a hard problem because it has these order interactions. I just do what's so-called large N, which is just a fancy way to say I'm doing mean field theory. But it's not it's any mean fields kind of interest mean field theory. So this is my model, my original model. And then what I do, I essentially say, oh, instead of having just a spin up and down, my spins now, they run from zero to a large value of N. So it's not it's just, it's, I just have, instead of having just two values of spin, I have now any value. So I increase the degeneracy of my problem, so that's why it's called large N. And then basically what I do, when I, I can write my, I can do in, in this language, I can do some sort of mean field theory, but the mean field here is special because I do a mean field, not in an order parameter, but I don't mean, do mean field in the bonds. So the, the mean field order parameters, are, they, they, are, they work more or less the same. So I have a bond parameter here, which I call hybridization, which couples the conduction electrons to the local moment. So it lives on this bond, on the JK bond, coupling the electrons, the conduction electrons to the local moment. And also I have another mean field parameter which it lives in the bond, which couple the two local moments. So essentially that's the mean field, but the mean field parameters, they are so-called bond operators because they live on the bond, okay? So I can, we can discuss more the details, it's a well-known theory, but I just want to point out it's not some trivial mean field theory because I don't have another parameter which is local. It's a mean field theory on the bonds. So this is kind of what makes it interesting. So this mean field theory has two phases, essentially, as a function of this, the, the magnetic, the direct coupling between the spins and the condo coupling. So if J, this guy is small, we have the condo phase, so I have condo temperature for the two impurities, they are larger than zero, so I have the condo effect. If this guy is large enough, the condo temperature is zero, and you just have this trivial solution here, which means your impurities are decoupled from the bath and form a singlet. Okay, there is a transition between them. There is a whole debate. In this mean field theory, really have a transition. In reality, just have a crossover, okay? So, but I'm not going to be interested in the transition. I just want to talk about the phase. I have just the two phases, and that's what matters for my for my, for my work. And just to show what we have, 
now just, just consider the case of a single impurity. I don't have the coupling between the local moment. And what happens is the following. Because now I have this, this disordered environment and put my impurities there, instead of have one value of condom temperature, I have a distribution of value of condom temperature just because each impurity, you place impurity in a place, it is a different environment. So it generates a distribution of condom temperatures. But not only that, it's not any distribution, it's extremely singular. It's a power law distribution. So if you look to P of TK, it's actually go TK to some power alpha. So this is, I'm showing P of TK. There's a typical value of TK. Here is just a geometric average, just to scale all curves here. But you really see in a log log plot this power law behavior as a, for different values of dopant. So this is in the insulated, this is in the metallic phase. Alpha here essentially does not depend on this n, okay? This is for the particular value of J condo. Uh, there is a theory by Eduardo, Darko, and Vlad where they, they more or less argue how you can get this kind of power law behavior. Just if you look into the fluctuations of the electron path, you can, you can explain this kind of power law behavior. I won't go into this detail. Also, Luis has a nice work on this in the different context. But anyway, so this is more or less understood, so we recover this in our simple model. And, and what is nice is that if you now, because in the condom problem, the only temperature scale is the condom temperature, we can write, let's say, that spin susceptibility in this shape, one over T over TK. It's just a simple fit to the, to the exact result. But if you just put this and you take the average from every single site, it's easy to see that this power law translates into power law in, in chi. So the, the spin susceptibility, it's just normalized by a value at some given energy scale here. It also diverges a power law. So this kind of theory immediately recovers a power law. But the power law here comes from the distribution of condo temperatures. Analogously, I can do a different, I can do a different game, which is the following. I can, I can just say, oh, let's look now. I not, no longer have the condo effect. I just have the random single phase. I mean, I just, have, I just look pairs of impurities which are randomly placed in this disordered system. So I can calculate essentially the, the values, the distribution of this value, P of J, which is the coupling between the local the local moment, and you see this now has a strong dependence with the N, so with the, with the density of impurity. This is easy to understand because, I mean, essentially you are changing the distance between the impurity as you change N. Essentially this distance, this average distance goes as one over the cubic root of N. So now this has a strong N dependence, so this is so this is for the insulator, for the metallic phase, it becomes narrow, but still broad. And now if you do, if you now calculate the, the susceptibility in this particular regime, there's a nice theory by Eduardo and others where you can show this actually has an analytic <coughs> form, which is kind of log correction to the cushion temperature. But by the end of the day, you can also fit, just numerically, you can pick up the data just fit by power loss. So in principle power loss, are also nice fit here. So I mean, and, and what I'm trying to say, you can you can also kind of understand how a power law will emerge here. Although there's a more more robust theory, which is, is particularly relevant to low temperature. But anyway, this kind of limit also has a power law. But this is a different power law. This is due to random singlet formation. And now we can join the two limits. Essentially, we do now really solve the two condo impurity problems inside this disordered bath. So we, we can basically here, it's just the condo temperature for the two impurity problem as a function of this coupling between the local moment. Uh, what happens is the following, we can draw a phase diagram for this problem in the following sense. So I, can, I, I have a distribution of values of GIJ because I mean, it essentially depends on the distance and I can just solve my code and I can look to a critical value above which I just get t, uh, zero values for the condom temperature. I mean, when, when, whereas I get just TK equals zero, I say, oh, I'm in the random singlet phase. Below this, I can get low, uh, small values of TK, but I can also get uh, finite values of TK. I say I'm in the condom phase plus random singlet because of some of these sites who still form a random singlet. So I just have this phase diagram here. Notice that it has a limit here because I have a maximum value of GIJ because it's just the nearest neighbor. So I 
this is coated. So above this, I just have random singlets. If I increase JK, I have condo effect in random singlets. So I, I can get this kind of phase diagram, and I can get the two phases, okay? But I can look at this guy here, and I can still look to the distribution of condo temperature. In, for the two impurity problem, I still get the power law, okay? The power law is still there. But now the power law depends on N, depends on the dopant. It is not, it's kind of interesting because this dependence actually comes from the coupling between the two impurities, from the GIJ. So this somehow translates into a dependence of this power law into the dopant density. Okay, so this is nice because still have a power law. Well, it's not as nice because I mean, it's harder to get data, but you still get a power law, but now the power law depends on N, depends on the, on the density. And also you can, you can now, play around and calculate the spin susceptibility. Now the spin susceptibility, is, you still put the form one over two plus two K, which comes from the condo problem, but also have a different energy scale here is essentially what I call N3, which comes from this, essentially from the fact that if T is smaller than the J, which couples the impurities, they, the impurities just form a singlet, they do not contribute, and they contribute otherwise. So if you play this game, so now I have three energy scales here, have the two condo temperatures, and the co direct couple between the impurities, you still get the power law in this regime, and uh, this is shown here, sorry, it's not so clear to see, but I mean, these lines here are the power law fits, and you see that the exponent clearly depends on N. So this is just key here and it really depends on it. So this carries on to the observables. I, and then I, here I, I show you the exponent alpha as a function of n. So those lines here, they, they are for the single impurity case. So essentially here the exponent depends weakly on the dopant, so it does not see that the, this the, is the metal insulator transition in the bulk. Whereas if you now have the two impurity case, so those are for two different values of GK, you really see you have a dependence with the dopant, and this dependence essentially comes. Here, you, you have basically the random, the random singlet formation, so it's just the tail of PAJ with, the, with dominate, and here, essentially, this alpha starts to saturate, because here, basically, you, you reach some sort of, there is a cutoff temperature, which is the maximum value of J, which can somehow limits, and so you see this alpha starts to saturate, but there is a clear dependence of of alpha with n. And if you look into the experiment, so people extract this alpha as a function of n, so this would be the critical value. So you see, it starts and then decreases. So it's qualitatively, we can recover this, and you can trace it back to the actual, to the, to the j, to the direct, direct coupling between the impurities. So, so basically, that's what I'd like to talk to you. So I, what we studied, we studied better insulated transition doped sec semiconductors, which is an old but I hope to convince you it's still an interesting problem. There are still some nice features which deserve to be understood. This is about Anderson physics, which is tough. Uh, basically, here I, I translate this difficult problem into somehow simpler, simpler problem where I have well-formed local moments which are randomly distributed. Okay, so I still the simplified form of this complicated problem. I recovered the impact insulator, recovered the random singlet phase, which is well-known theory for almost 40 years. So this, this is good. Uh, I assume I have well-formed magnetic moments inside the, the metal. That's why I, I do a simplified theory. Uh, and with this, I can, I can study the competition, which I propose this minimum model, two periods in the condo Heisenberg model. And I, with the simple model, I can get the power law. And this exponent alpha continues vary with the density. So this is kind of, and it, it, it's also oblivious to the metal insulator transition in the sense that this power law persists on both sides of the transition. And the next step would be to perform a self-consistent theory, for instance, using a Hubbard model. Because in the Hubbard model, the, the local moment will be self-consistently created. And the question I mean, how much of this physics really survive? But as I said, this is really much harder problem because I mean, it's easier in my case where I do have the local moments and there is no dynamics in the local moment. So this is, this is easier. So, Thank you very much for your attention. Questions? Please. I have a question as I'm going there. Uh, so could you say that your, the model, the mean field model, is like a form of DMFT? Or? Yeah, it's a, it's a low energy DMFT. So that if you're talking about DMFT, look, I'll just describe the condo peak. 
So yes, so this is what, this is technically just slave bosons with the low energy. So I mean, the one thing we could do, I just did two periods. We could try to, let's say, to do the condo lattice and do like cluster DMFT using this as some sort of impurity solver and that would capture just the low energy part. So, but that's what I'm interested in because I'm just really talking about, I wanna see whether they form uh, condo or, or random single. So in principle, qualitative, that should be enough. So very interesting talk. Uh, in your model, you have JAB and JK for the two impurities. Yes. So is the JK for the, for the two impurities equal? Yes. I, I, my, my, my reason is that uh, what is random is really the position. But I'm assuming, let's say, the JK would be a local thing which would be uniform. In principle, you could put so are there, but I mean, I'm just saying, okay, since this is, there's no reason for this local thing to be different in principle. The simplest model just keep them uniform and equal to the two. Because to if, if I remember correctly, the two impurity combo model, the when J1 and J2 are equal, is this like a special point? Yes, this, yes, this, this a, true. So, so, so. In, in, and this translates, for instance, into, if you, if you really do this problem, so this, there is a quantum critical point quantum here, which point, is, yeah. with a special feature of this point. Yes, so that's absolutely true. So that's why I put this instead of, I, I, I'm kind of moving away, I'm just entering two phases, but you're absolutely right. So we have, this is a special feature of this particle hole symmetric point. So, so what, when you move away from this point, you just have to get crossovers but, but and then, so But then would the, the qualitative the results change if, say, JK1 is different than JK2? No, I, I would no. say no because I already have different condo temperatures because I'm a disorder. Okay. So, so JK1 can already be considerably different. So I would say no just because mm. of that. Okay. But Very you nice. have a good point. Okay. Yes. Good. Any further questions? I have another question. So in the next slide, so there's a cha small change in, in the condo temperature as a function of, of the, of the no, no, the, this, the previous one, J just for the single impurity, yeah. So there's a small dependence on the on this doping. Yes. So what changes in your model? Because if they're completely I independent, so it, you should, what, could, could you not treat each one uh, separately? What, what, that's exactly what we do. So the, 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 the thing here is, for instance, if you look into the condo problem, when I change this density, basically what I'm changing. Is the chemical potential. Exactly, and, ah. and, and the value of the density. Basically, I would, I would be changing this guy, the, density, the local density of states, because I mean, this in principle would be different. This is kind of, thing, this, I would say this result is not completely understood why this is so robust. I mean, this is, it's not so easy to can can have some several arguments, mm -hmm. but in principle, what I would be happening here, I'll be changing this local density of states because I have different. But I mean, if I'm sitting at the same site, when I change and I change the local density of state, that's why I would get a different value for TK, and that's why the distribution would change. Essentially, and that would be the reason. So, do you understand in simple terms why the exponent changes in? when you put the two, two things together? Because I, 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 I would expect just, it's just a cutoff at high TK, as you show. The TK goes to zero, yes. right? But, yeah. but the alpha exponent is a property of low TKs. Yes. So well, this I, is just the, the mean field? Yeah, I know? guess this, I, this is just coming from the, 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 this guy here changing, essentially. I guess basically, to, at least to my understanding, because this P of GIJ changes, that's what essentially what's, what's translating to alpha change. So, so in terms of the mean field theory, uh, change, you're changing basically the J, JAB, I think a, Exactly. Called, and that uh, affects a little bit the, the order parameter for the condo problem. Exactly, exactly. So that, okay. that's, that's, that's how it comes. You're absolutely right, yes. Because basically what happens is that, conversely to the single impurity case, there, here I can, I, 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 at every given temperature, I take a different number of, of singlets just because of J. So that's, that's what translates into this dependence. At least that's how I understand. I mean, it's a simple thing. That's, I guess that's the only thing which could <laughs> Well. Any further questions? Okay, so if not, let's thank the speaker again and all the speakers of the session. And I'll see you at dinner tonight, and if not, tomorrow morning. <laughs>